So in today's lesson, we're going to start working on our GUI. And let's just go ahead and start with the score. Let's get a score showing up here. We'll go ahead and we'll get all the code in place. And then tomorrow, let's go ahead and create the, the menu. So when the, when the game starts, you can hit play and it starts. And then when the game's over, it pops back up. I want to keep everything in one scene this time. I believe in our last game, we went ahead and had uh, two scenes we we're jumping between. One for the main menu, one for the game. This time, we're going to keep it all in one scene. So I've already got a score script created. Come down to scripts. We got that. Let's make sure it's open. I'm going to come back in. And in the hierarchy, I'm going to right click. And we have this little UI option here. And to start off with the little score text that I'm going to put up here, all we need is that text, but it's going to add a few things here for us. So right off the bat, it added a canvas for us, and there's nothing we need to do right now on the canvas. And it also added an event system. Again, right now, nothing we need to do with that. But I am going to rename my canvas to game UI. Then I want to go ahead and change my text to score. And this time around, let's actually go out and get a font. In the last game, we didn't. This time around, let's go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to jump onto the Asset Store. If you've got a font off of some website that you really like, that you want to use, by all means, go ahead. I'm actually just going to grab mine off the Asset Store. So I believe it's Textures and Materials. There we go, Fonts. I want free only. It looks like the internet's going a little slow for me today. Now, some of these packages you do have to be careful with. Uh, they'll come with like, like a million different fonts in them. We just need one or two. Uh, well, I'm just going to pick this first one. I don't want to spend too much time looking at them. I just want to grab something basic. So I'm going to quickly look at the package. So we have some documentation. We have the TFF or the TTF. I don't know why I always call it TFF, but it's TTF. That's your two type font. That's what you need. Uh, we've got some scripts here, which I'm not going to bother importing. You can't not download them, but all I'm going to import is the Jazz Create, because that's the actual font. So we'll go ahead, we'll download this, and then import it into our game. All right, so I don't want the PNG. I don't want the scripts. I do want this. I'm going to take the documentation, but I'm not going to take the scenes. And there we go. So great, here's our font. So let's go ahead, we'll click on the text. And we can reassign a font. Well, I guess we should put something up there to begin with so we can actually see it. So my text by default is down here. If we come into the scene, scroll all the way out. And to be honest, you're better off hitting this 2D button so it puts you in a position where you can see it better. And I just crashed a window. That's fine. We'll just go ahead, we'll close it. Well, it's not going to let me close it. Well, I did that time. Sometimes if it doesn't let me close it, coming up to the layouts and changing your layout, we'll go ahead and do it as well. But I'm just going to close it, then reopen it. And go ahead, redrag it. Now, to be fair, I've only had it crashing in this particular layout. But that's okay. So anyway, I'm in 2D. This is the size of my canvas, which relates to the actual size of my game window. So if I were to go ahead and change aspect ratios, like do a six by nine, you see how it changes? I'm actually just gonna stick to a five by four. And this is my score text down here. So if we come up, I wanna go ahead and get it in the top left. So I'm gonna click this little gizmo up here. I'm actually gonna hold shift. If we read up here, holding shift also sets the pivot. And I want alt to, sh to set the position as well. And we notice how the layout changes here. We get the little dots. When we click this one, it puts it up into the corner for me. If I click out, the box closes. And I want to move it down just a little bit. So I'm going to take it off to the edge by 10. And I want to move it down by 10. So that's negative 10. And the scores themselves are never going to be that big. I guess it really depends on how big of a score you want. I am actually going to make this just a little bit bigger like this. Just by dragging and dropping. Alternatively, I could have adjusted the width and height over here. And just to be more precise, I'm going to go ahead and make it 200 by 100. There we go. That's probably way too big. But I'm not sure what this font's going to be like. So let's go ahead. There's two ways to assign the font. You can click, drag it. You can also click the little target button. Since I only have one font, I can grab it. I can also grab the default. 
And I want the font to be bold. I usually go auto best fit just to see what it looks like. And that's okay. I'm going to manually size it. Maybe a nice 40 point. And I'm looking down here to see what it looks like relative to everything else, not up here. Uh, I think I want something just a tad bigger. So let's do a 48. I'm going to keep my line space in the tank the same. Rich text, it doesn't matter. Rich text has to do with you're going to add a like color coding and stuff. All we're going to do is just put text up here. So we don't really need it on. And I'm just going to go ahead and turn it off. Alignment, how do you want it positioned inside of the, the actual box? So we can go ahead and center it. We can go ahead and put it down into the center of the box this way. I'm going to go ahead and leave it up the top, and I want to leave it left aligned. And I am going to change the colors. Um, I'm eventually going to put a background in. I'm not sure what color the background is going to be right now, but I just want something that shows up a little bit better. So I'm just going to go ahead and just do white. And I will add a shadow. Actually, let's add an outline first. Gives it a nice one point outline. We can go ahead and make it thicker if we want. And I'm going to do my shadow. And the shadow, I'm going to do two points. There we go. Starting to look a little bit better. And I don't want the shadow to be that dark. I'm going to bring its alpha down a bit. Oh, not that much. I'm going to turn it off. Right around there. All right, so we're gonna leave the checkbox for use graphic alpha. That way there, if I adjust the alpha on the colors for the actual text box, it'll automatically adjust these for me as well. Great, I got it looking nice. I'm gonna come up here, throw a score in there. Oh, something like 43. There we go. It's kind of an ugly looking font actually now that I look at it, but <laughs> that's okay, we got one. Let's go ahead and jump into our script and start playing with it. So go ahead, I'm actually gonna attach it first. Then we'll jump in. All right, so this time around, I'm actually gonna create a private variable, but I'm gonna serialize field, and I'm gonna call it score. This is the current score that the player has. And I like to start mine off at zero. I'm gonna create another serialized field. This time around, we're gonna be saving the score, at least the high score, into the player prefs and loading it back up so that you can actually have a score from game to game saved. And make sure this is lowercase. You do not wanna have a variable the same name as the actual class, not as far as the actual spelling goes. You'll get an error. This is actually an int, I forgot the data type. And I'm just gonna call this high score. And yes, I know, I'm gonna start it off at zero. And then I wanna get a reference to the text component, this component right here. But to get that, we actually have to add one more namespace, and that's the Unity Engine.ui. Now I can come down here and do serialize field. We want the text component, and I'm just going to call it score text. Then right away in my awake, I want to make sure I get a reference to that. So score text is equal to get component. The component we want is text, and we could come up here and do the required field or required component tag for it. But I'm only ever going to be putting this on a GUI text, so I'm not worried about it. If this gets put on anything else besides a GUI text, I actually want that error. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start off, do void. Let's make this one public, actually. Public void add. And this is just gonna add a certain amount of points to our score. And I like to give mine a default value. So I'm gonna say int amt is equal to one. Then in here, I'm gonna go ahead and say score plus equal, so we're gonna add to it amt. So we'll add the amount passed in. So if they pass in a 10, then 10 gets added in. If they pass in nothing, one will get added in. Great, let's also go ahead and have one that sets the score. And for this one, we're gonna take an integer and I'm just gonna say AMT. And this one here is just gonna set the score to that value. So score is equal to AMT. So we're not gonna increase it, we're just gonna add to it. Then I'm gonna one that updates the display. And this one's gonna be private, so void. Update, display, ah, uh, got me. And in this one, we're gonna go ahead and say score text dot text, because what we're doing is going ahead and getting this text component, then we actually wanna get the text element in that component. And we're gonna say that is equal to score. Now this will convert it to a string for me, but I'm actually just gonna use the toString 
and do it manually just so that I know this is actually being converted to a string. It's just more of a visual. Sure, it's a couple extra keystrokes, but with autocomplete, it really is just a couple extra keystrokes. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the set. So after I've set the score to a certain value, it'll automatically update that display for me. And I'm also gonna add that in up here because after I add to the score, I wanna make sure that's updated. And I'm gonna go into my start. And when it first starts, I wanna make sure I call the set. And I'm not gonna pass the value in because I'm gonna come down here and set a default value for this too. So I'm gonna set a default value of zero. So if, when I call set like this, that means the amount that's gonna be passed in is zero. If I called it like this, that means the score is gonna be set to 10. It's just a nice way to basically reset the score. There we go. I think that's all we're gonna need for adding to our score. So let's save that script off. I'm gonna jump back into Unity, make sure we have no typos. All right, everything's good. So we have the score and the high score exposed over here. I just want to see it. Same thing with the uh, text. I hit play. The score text should automatically populate. It does. And if we click it, we see the element it went to. And of course, it's grabbing its own text. That's great. If you didn't want to add the awake, you could go ahead and click and drag it down. Oops. You could go ahead and grab it and drag it down and assign it. Or you could just grab it this way. I'm just going to leave it like that for now. It goes out and finds it on its own. So let's go ahead into Game Manager and start hooking this up. All right, so reset score. We should do something down here with the score too. So it looks like we're set, checking to see if we have a new score. And then we should also reset the player score. Now I might be doing this somewhere else and if I am, I'll come back and remove it here, but here seems like a good spot to do it. So that means we are gonna need a reference to that script, which isn't too bad. I'll come up here. I believe this is the only script that interacts with score too, so it's great, we only need it once. So serialize field, score, let's do lowercase score. Then am I awake? Actually, I'm just gonna drag and drop for this one. Come down here, go score dot score set, and we see that we have the default value assigned here, so that means we can just Close it off like that, that'll set it to zero. I'm not gonna play with the high score yet. I'm gonna put the comments like this. And we'll come up, and here's where we wanna update the player score. Now there's a couple ways we can do it with the way we've set the score script up. One is we can just add one to the score, or another way is to send in the actual size of the pick number. Either one should work. I'm just gonna go ahead and send in the pick number so it just doesn't have to calculate. So score dot set. And the amount we want to send in is pick number. And we'll make some comments here. Set the update the player's score. And let's go ahead and make sure that, that is assigned inside of Unity. So we'll have to come to the game manager. And I'm just going to go ahead and drag the score in. And what have we got here? Score high scores assigned. Okay, that's fine. We'll, we'll deal with that in a bit. So I'm going to stop that, start it up. And we have a score of zero. Here we got a score of one. So it did double yellow on me. It goes to two. So yellow, yellow, green. It goes to three. Great. Now let's fail this one. There we go. And it resets for me. Now, unfortunately, I'm running out of time right now. So I'm going to have to end this video right here. If I get time later on today, we'll go ahead and we'll add the high score part into it. If not, I'll make that tomorrow's video. And then the only thing after that, I believe, was just the game menu, and we're done with the Simon game, and we'll move on to that space fighting game. Anyway, I'll see everyone in the next video. Bye-bye. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You'd be a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest. Or being stalked by eagles and falcons. Lions, tigers, and bears. <laughs>